so the CDI had four institutes, one of which dealt with the important things, which are the heart. And, uh, you know, the, the institute talks about congenital heart disease, and when people talk about congenital heart disease, they're talking about congenital heart defects, major plumbing problems, you know, holes, things that are obstructed, things that leak, plumbing issues. And over the last 25 years, the new frontier of pediatric cardiology has not been so much those static lesions, though a lot of children are born with them, and I think one of the functions is to try to prevent them. It's dealing with other types of pediatric heart disease that because of what we do here, me and other folks do here, we see a lot of. And that develops with heart failure in children. Heart failure in adults is a national epidemic. It's a disease of the elderly. It's increasing in frequency. A good thrust of most of the research efforts in American cardiology in the last 10 years have been focused on treatment of heart failure. Trying to derive those investigations and apply them to heart failure we deal with children has been a major focus of what we've done here at Children's Hospital as an individual institution and in collaboration with the other large heart uh, centers around, really around the world. And as an example of what we're talking about, this is some uh, results of what they saw on pediatric heart failure, another type of pediatric heart failure in the United Kingdom and Ireland. And you can see here that the diseases we're talking about are not just holes and obstructions, but other things that are truly congenital heart disease, because many of these are diseases of heart muscle. And in children, heart failure and diseases of heart muscle are very often another type of congenital heart disease, which is genetic heart muscle disease. We are increasingly finding people where they have problems with their heart muscle, their pumps don't work, and it's because of previously unrecognized genetic problems with proteins and enzymes that are inherited. And this is the new frontier of congenital heart disease, so study of heart failure is particularly apt for a congenital heart disease institute within the Children's Discovery Institute. And the diseases besides, you know, repairs that don't work and leave the heart somewhat beat up, we're dealing with heart muscle diseases, cardiomyopathies, inflammatory heart muscle disease, myocarditis, rhythm problems in the hearts, toxic effects of other therapies, most, most commonly, unfortunately, the successful therapies for childhood neoplasms often leave children with fatal heart disease, anthracycline toxicity. There are a whole slew of metabolic heart diseases that affects the metabolism of myocardium that we deal with here. And how to treat those and how to effectively uh, uh, try to make these children well is a big challenge that we deal with uh, every day. Transplantation is just, in, in my mind, one therapy that we offer here as a heart failure center. Personally, I get more satisfaction out trying to figure out a way to keep a child from getting a transplant than have them get a transplant, uh, even though it does drop the numbers that the hospital's always worried about. <laughs> but personally, I'd rather not do that. But so we're dealing, we're, we're dealing with diseases here that very often are, might be considered relatively uncommon in a lot of pediatric cardiology centers around the world, but for what we deal with here in St. Louis, because we truly are a national referral center for pediatric heart failure, we see these all the time. And here's the interesting thing and why it's so important here that what spikes our interest is that the, this, these, these are two survival cures of an analysis that we did here at Children's using data from the Pediatric Cardiomyopathy Registry, which is an NIH-supported pediatric cardiomyopathy heart muscle disease database that's existed for 15 years. We've been a big contributor to that. We did this analysis. And the thing is about heart failure in children is it's not just that one thing happens. A lot of things can happen. Children these days can die, certainly. They get transplants. And again, transplantation is not a cure, it's, it's a palliation, meaning you, it's a time-limited therapy 
they can have ongoing disease. But the really exciting thing that, that really drives us are these curves here in orange, children that recover. As you can see here with two types of heart muscle disease, myocarditis or heart muscle disease and heart failure due to infections and to heart muscle disease that we don't know the cause of is idiopathic, both curves are associated with a substantial proportion of children that with treatment not only survive, but their hearts recover. In other words, you have a heart that initially comes into Allen Doctor's ICU that does this, and then a few years later does this. And that, trying to figure that out and how we can change that has been a focus of a lot of our investigation here in St. Louis and all across the country for other heart failure centers that are involved with the treatment of heart failure in children. Figuring out how, how we can put more kids away from the blue line of transplant or the red line of death to the orange line of recovery is a huge challenge that faces us. And we think we have the potential to try to improve upon is what is one of the basis of the investigation that Patrick and I were in, are involved in. And to that end, in the last year, actually th these, these studies came out after we got started on this project, but from other things, it's increasingly apparent that in adults who have heart failure, that they can have problems with metabolism of sugar, which is a main energy source of the heart, and they seem to have a problem that, for want of a better term, they seem to have very mild diabetes, i.e. They, they have problems with resistance to the effects of insulin, and they have sugar problems, not severe enough that they're overtly diabetic, but not just right. And these mild problems are clearly associated in adults with symptoms and severity of heart failure in adults. And this line of work on sugar metabolism and insulin resistance is entirely contrary or goes a, a whole different direction from what traditional therapeutic mechanisms are for the treatment of heart failure. And quite honestly, traditional mechanisms are to determine the severity of heart failure. And in the last year, as you can see here by these references that you, from this year, there is accumulating evidence in adults that there are relationships between resistance to insulin and sugar metabolism and severity of heart failure. Now the issue here is what does this mean? Nobody knows for sure yet. Is that, does this mean that that's just a marker for disease severity, like it's just a milepost how bad it is? Or does this represent truly an opportunity to attack heart failure in a different way that would allow a novel therapy to allow us to improve heart function and make people better outside of the normal therapeutic pathways we usually follow. For us in pediatric heart failure, trying to, we always are at the point of trying to apply what happens to adults to children. And sometimes it's not the same, because you can see from the first slide I showed you the diseases we are dealing with in children that cause heart failure are very different than the myocardial infarctions that old people like me get. Thank you, Lee. I am old. Uh, you know, and, and you know, it's entirely different. So the challenge is for those of us who are trying to, to put more children on the orange curve instead of the red and blue curve, is this a pathway that we, we potentially might utilize? And to that end, we need to see whether the same phenomena exist in children as it does in adults. And that's the focus of this study. Pat's been formulated the study along with Paul Hrues. I'll leave it to, to Pat to explain what he's been doing. Thanks.